Welcome to another edition of Random Road Cuts here on State Highway 68 in Northwest Arizona, about midway between Laughlin, Nevada and Kingman, Arizona, right here near the crest. This is a little pass called Union Pass. Here in the morning, we got some cars zipping by. Just give you a nice little view, looking at the North Road Cut there. Uh, but we're on the other side of the road, so we're gonna focus on this road cut. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here checking out road cuts. And random road cuts, if you're new to this series, is just what it sounds like. We stop at a road cut, a um, place I've never been before, and make up some observations, investigate, come up with interpretations and hypotheses, and see if we can piece together a, a, a possible story for that specific road cut. So we, it's always good to start with what we know regionally. So we're in Northwest Arizona, basin and range country. Um, in terms of rock types in this area, um, lots of volcanics. There's some intrusive rocks as well. There's metamorphic rocks and there's sometimes some sedimentary rocks or just sediments. And so really in this location, anything's possible. So let's just head over here and see what we've got. We can see we've got some white rocks here and then a nice sharp contact into some darker rocks. And we'll probably work the road cut from here uh, down to my truck there past the sign. So let's see what we've got. So <clears throat> these white rocks, we can see that they're composed of particles. So we can see there's some darker chunks or particles embedded in the rock. These are what we call clasts. Looks like they're a variety of sizes. Looks like they're also, in general, pretty angular. You can see this one has some sharp points to it. So not seeing a lot of rounding here in the rock. Um, the matrix surrounding those particles is this white, very fine-grained material. And some of those particles, there's a bigger one up here that's embedded in the rock kind of weathered a little bit. You can see how big some of those particles get. So, see if we can make some other observations working our way along the road cut here. If anything else stands out to us. Yeah, these particles are incredibly angular. You can look at these shapes here and they've got all sorts of little sharp corners to them. Um, so right away we're thinking maybe in terms of processes, We'd either have to consider volcanic processes, like an explosive eruption, possibly a, a lahar, a volcanic mud flow. Uh, if we stick with sedimentary rocks, we might um, go with some process like a landslide or mass wasting, something in that realm. We've got a nice fractured surface here with some discoloration. So this is just, um, this fracture has had fluids move through it and it's deposited or precipitated out some darker material here. Um, so you can see that that's right on the edge of that. And if you look at some of these other fractures, like these ones running up through here, they have some of the same characteristics with these brown and green coated surfaces. So, so some different colors showing up depending on uh, if it's fractured or not largely looks the same through here. Uh, I don't know where you're at with what to call this stuff. Um, to me, this looks like volcanic ash mostly. So I'm gonna call this a tuff. So let's go with volcanic tuff for this material here. Again, quite common in this part of Arizona and in this part of the country. Then we get a nice sharp contact here with the dark material. Um, the rock changes to a little bit more pink right along the contact. So when we look at contacts like this, we're thinking, is it a, is it a depositional contact? Is it a contact where the two units were placed next to each other due to the processes? Or is it a faulted contact? This one's at a particularly high angle. And so you could have you know one layer put on top of another and then everything get tilted or you could have everything be faulted 
I think another good clue here, if we can back up enough to see it all, is to look at this contact in terms of big picture. You can see it's quite irregular and actually that dark layer actually thins out way up there, obviously uh, way up high on the road cut, place we can't get to. Uh, so it doesn't have the overall appearance of a fault. It's not as planar and straight as we'd like to see. And knowing that we're probably dealing with volcanic rocks, then it would make sense that we would have these, these little pinch out points here. We could have maybe another volcanic tuff, maybe deposited on top of it and draped over the top of it. Maybe we're looking at some sort of lava flow, um, but in a volcanic context, you'd have a lot of different possibilities there. So the dark layer here, very different, harder material. And then it actually changes a little bit right here. So let me take you back to where we were, get you back kind of oriented here. So there's the original contact. And then if we move over about 10 feet, about three meters, uh, it changes again. And here in the gray, we're starting to see more of the little class, the little particles. So this is looking somewhat like what we saw before, but it's got a lot of this darker material and it looks like it's probably different. So as to what this dark material is, don't know. I think it's still volcanic. It looks like it's been very much altered by fractures and possibly fluids moving through it that's oxidized and changed the original character of the material um, so it could be you know some other volcanic rock like maybe a, a dacite or a quartz latite or something um, like a lava flow but that one over here looked like it's ash it's tough it's an explosive eruptive event and here we've got something that could be either the same thing with a different composition with the color change uh, or if it's more intact it could be actually one of these silica rich thick lava flows but right now i'm leaning towards everything being probably a little more ash rich as we come over into this next unit there is some crude layering to it so you might be able to pick out some of the layering um i guess running about like this but it's very fractured, right? The rock is really pretty beat up and fractured. And actually right here, we get a nice little view of what's going on here. So this surface is incredibly polished and smooth. You can see the lines running up and down on it. This is a small little fault plane. So the rocks have been moved on either side of this surface. The rocks get pulverized when they move and because of the friction between the rocks it actually polishes that fault plane and these lines here are called uh, slicken lines. And they actually indicate which way the fault moved when it when the, this little earthquake happened. So here they're going up and down so this would be a up and down fault or what we call a dip slip fault. So a little fault there and you can actually see it come up we can see it exposed down here but you can actually trace that fault plane up through the rocks uh, and maybe even a little bit further up through this part here uh, let's see what else we got oh so another here's another nice big fault plane just beautifully polished uh, if the sun was hitting this right now you'd probably see some reflection so we've got another fault plane cutting more or less parallel to the, the road cut itself. And again, dip slip motion. You can see the lines, these slicken lines on the surface going up and down. So we're in this gray unit. Again, I can't tell if it's um, like a lava flow or I think it might be with the layering it makes sense for maybe it to be more of a a lava flow versus a explosive pyroclastic unit but again random road cuts we're just observing more than we're interpreting although sometimes it's hard to separate the two um yeah not seeing a lot of 
difference here. There's a color change here though, as we're coming in this direction. It looks like it picks up a little bit more red as we move into this zone, possibly due to, you know, more water, probably hot water that was circulating through the rocks, oxidizing the iron that it has. You can see a lot of the orange and red is concentrated along the fractures. So you can actually see these as, as lines that are cutting through the rock. There's a nice one down here. And so the rock's pretty beat up, um, but we do get sometimes a little look at the original composition. It's definitely still volcanic, um, but without knowing the exact percentages of, of quartz to you know feldspar, sometimes it's tough to make accurate um, an accurate identification of that specific rock type. All right, let's see what else we have. So more of this orange, red, busted up material. Yeah, it very much looks like it's had fluids move through it. Could be in a fault zone. Sometimes in a fault zone, you get higher uh, porosity and permeability. So fluids move through that zone more in a more pronounced way it's a nice sharp contact here running right up through the middle here and at a fairly steep angle i can see that going all the way up towards the top of the road cut could be another fault not seeing the slick inside surfaces um, but it still could possibly be a fault actually right here there's a bit of a yeah, that's a nice flat surface, so probably another fault. And if we look closely, we can see there's some broken up particles in here. And that's common along faults too. It's what's called a fault breccia. So as the rocks move on either side of the fault, they get pulverized and broken up. So we're probably looking at another fault here running right up through uh, the center of the view there. So, similar material here. More of the same or less. And then another sharp contact right here. Um, let's back up and get a view of that. See what that looks like. Yeah, so this one's a little bit more regular too. You can see this contact come up and it sort of just zigzags and steps up the way here and then looking back to where we started down there so let's give this contact a little more scrutiny and then we'll work down just a little bit further so a little different color here on this face but i'm still seeing some crude striations it's not as polished as what we've seen before but probably another fault surface. Again, it's not quite as smooth and that's okay. Sometimes that just depends on the rock type and how much movement's occurred. It also has some of these busted up little clasts, little broken rock particles. Uh, and that's either, if we're back into the tuff, that could just be the tuff itself or it could be again, one of these, these fault breaches. Then there's an interesting little pink zone in here it's white in the center and it, it's actually cut by some small faults running across you know, it steps over there's a little step here and then there's some small ones down here as well so a step to the left step to the left step to the left step to the left so there's some small low angle faults another one up here cutting through this so the rock's definitely pretty beat up faulted um, and then as we come further to the right, there's some interesting two rock types really that show up here, I'd say. We've got this pink unit here, which I think again looks like a tuff. It's just maybe a little more compacted and cemented together. Uh, and then we have the white material above, which has a lot of these other particles in it. Um, so this could be a different tuff and they're interlayered. It could be 
the same material, but one's had some fluids move through it and it's cemented together differently. But we can see there's a contact here, kind of moving down off the top of this one. And then as we move further to the right or the west, um, it's looking more like what we started with, this white to light gray uh, particles, dark particles of rock, volcanic tuff, angular particles that we saw earlier. The road's getting busy, so it's getting a little loud. Uh, and then another contact here with this with some red but it has class in it if you look closely there's gray particles inside this um, so hard to say for sure if it's a completely different unit or is it just a zone that was more oxidized and it's totally a different color but it's compositionally the same as the white material Looking at the nature of the contact, could be a fault. It's pretty um, the sharp. The contact between these two units is pretty sharp. Could be a fault, but not necessarily. And then let's just end up wrapping this up down here. Looks like as we head down a little bit further, it's a long road cut. There's a little bit more of the same, another red patch here more of the white but i suspect we've seen the majority of the diversity for this road cut so the different types of processes we might envision for this light color tuff that we've been looking at um, i'd say given what we see here it's most likely just pyroclastic explosive events either pyro probably pyroclastic flows that pick up particles transport them quite quickly uh, some of these might have been blown out of the vent during the eruption others might have been swept up in a lahar you might see a little bit more rounding you also might see evidence of uh, organic material like charcoal or pieces of plant remains um, not seeing a lot of that so i would say a pyroclastic flow might be the most likely um, process there so so there you have it. Um, sometimes we end up asking more questions with these random road cut series videos than we actually solve. But give you a nice little view of what we came through here at Union Pass, elevation 3571 on Highway 68 in Northwest Arizona. A little look across the road to the north. And there you have it. So thanks for joining me. Hope you learned as much as I did. These little random road cuts are fun because you just, you never know what you're gonna find. And sometimes you're surprised. Sometimes you're scratching your head because there's a lot to figure out. But we just learned together. There's that nice sharp contact between those two. It'd be nice to get up there, but probably a little too spicy to get up there, so. Anyway, thanks for joining me from this random road cut on Highway 68 in Northwest Arizona. Take care.